Okay, in this lesson I wanted to go over present value. That is, we're going to look at a basic present value problem. We'll also look at present value of ordinary annuity or regular annuity and then also present value of an annuity due. So the first one we're going to go to is we'll hit the f of x function in Excel and under category we'll do financial and if I click in there uh, get close to PV for present value. So in Excel, PV stands for present value. So I'm going to click the PV and hit OK. And it gives us the rate, number, periods, payment, future value, and type. So I'm going to walk through the example on page 117 of your textbook where it's asking us how much do we have to invest today in order to receive a positive three thousand dollars in the future that is the future value would be three thousand dollars and that's at a annual rate of eight percent for two years so we're going to put in rate is point zero eight number periods is two there's no payment because we're not adding any money to the account at the end of the time period. So that's going to be just blank or zero, and I tend to like to leave those blank. And the future value is going to be a positive $3,000. So if we look down at the formula result, yes, it does match up the textbook. It says that if I invested $2,572.01 today in two years, if compounded 8% annually, I would have the positive $3,000 in the account. Uh, again, remember this is just annual compounding, so it gives us the present value based on annual compounding. But let's say that if we did do, well, we knew that it was compounded uh, quarterly. Well, what I would have to do is I'd have to readjust this rate again, put 0 0.08 divided by 4, and the number of periods since there's two years and there's four periods in each year, we'd have to multiply that by four, too. And what happens is, well, the present value goes down a little bit because, again, the idea that you're compounding more frequently. You have to put less money in today in order to receive that positive $3,000 two years from now. Again, notice that Excel has our formula result as a negative $2,560.47 because that's the amount of money from your perspective you have to invest a negative cash flow in order to receive a positive cash flow of $3,000 two years from now. All right, I'm going to hit OK on this one. I'm going to pull up another cell here. And again, F of X and financial and again we'll find present value PV and Excel for present value and I'm going to hit OK now in uh, chapter 5 on page 131 I'm going to duplicate the examples they have towards the bottom of the page there first with a three-year ordinary annuity or sometimes called a regular annuity and then also the three-year annuity due uh, with the three-year ordinary annuity, this is saying, well, what if I needed to receive $8,000 at the end of every year for the next three years? You know, How much money would I have to put in an account today at a given interest rate in order to make sure that I could pull out $8,000 at the end of the year for the three years? So your very last amount you pull out, the $8,000, that's exactly what you'd have left in the account and your balance would be zero. We'll start off with a three-year ordinary annuity and we're saying that the rate is at 10% in this example so we'll put in 0 0.10. The number of periods is three years. The payment we would receive a positive $8,000 so again thinking that we have to invest so much today but we want to actually have a positive cash flow to us of $8,000 and the future value zero we don't want any money left when we're done and if we look at this, the formula result tells us that we'd have $19,894.81, uh, rounded up to $0.82. Cents. It matches up with our textbook example. And if I invested this much today, I would be able to take out $8,000 at the end of every year for the next three years. Again, you have to remember that this $19,894.81 goes a whole year at the end of that year it earns 10 percent interest on it so I have a new balance in that account a new principal amount and then I take out eight thousand dollars and that process repeats itself until the end of that third year I have exactly eight thousand in the account and I take out the eight thousand right. 
Well, what if instead we wanted to take out the money at the beginning of the time period? Uh, this is called like an annuity due for present value. So I want to receive the payment up front. Well, what we're going to use is the type function here. We're going to change that to a 1. Okay. And if you notice down here in the formula result, now I have to have $21,884.29. You know, the reason is, is that I'm taking the money out earlier. I have to have more money available now to make sure that I can take out $8,000 at the beginning of each time period. So in many ways, if you kind of look at the example in the textbook, we really never get to that third year any money. It's just saying that it happens at the beginning of that time period. So the main difference between annuity due and regular or ordinary annuity is that type 1. So again, anytime you have annuity due, we're going to put it in type 1. Uh, last thing I just want to kind of point out and discuss for concept of present value, because present value is so critical in finance, we'll look at it later with net present value, but it, it's saying what is something worth to you today, uh, today's date, day zero, if you will. And there's an inverse relationship between interest rates and present value. That is, as the interest rate goes up, the present value goes down. And as interest rates drop, the present value goes up. And this, you know, helps us make decisions, you know, to find out what is something worth to me today. Would, would I be willing to pay this much for something knowing what it's worth to me today? So well, that ends our lesson in present value, and we'll stop there.